It's Friday night, and it's greasy time. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special show for you tonight. We not only have my dear friend Adam Abershaw, who you've seen down here before, but we've also got our dear friend Michael Zimmerman. And look at that. We're all on here. Wave, guys. Coming to you from the funky basement in the house of Greece. Let's have some fucking fun, okay? <laughs>
welcome to the show. That was fun. Nice. Nice, gentlemen. Nice, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Enjoyed that. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first full band, full band show of Greasy Time. I'm throwing Muddy Waters back up there on the screen for a second. That's some artwork from the iconic Electric Mud album from 1969. One of my absolute favorites. Me as well. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Great record. Great record with uh, one of my heroes, Pete Cozy, playing lead guitar on that, who also played with Miles a couple years later. And uh, so I'm going to come back to the home screen here. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the show. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, obviously, to do this properly, we are a safe distance from one another. We're each in our own zone, and uh, we're covering our masks for each other's safety, and uh, we're grateful to get to play music. Um, these guys have been, uh, let me bring them back into frame, actually. Hold on one second, folks. I'm pulling double duty here. Now we're all up there. Ladies and gentlemen, um, these are my COVID buddies here. Obviously, Adam Abishaw, Zimmerman, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've done a bunch of social distance uh, jamming together over the past several months. You've heard Zimmerman on the show before on some of the recordings uh, that we've uh, had out here. The Battle of Wills, that's Zimmerman playing bass. And, uh, and also, When Will Then Be Now, that's Zimmerman playing bass. And uh, it's an honor to have you, my friend. Thank you for yeah, joining man. And so, um, without further ado, I'm going to, I'll come back to the home screen here. See you guys in a minute, fellas. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the, the logo and the Venmo and PayPal. Folks, I really appreciate week after week you tuning in and uh, being so gracious with your shares and your subscriptions to the YouTube channel. Um, if you like what you're hearing, hell, even if you don't like what you're hearing, throw some money <laughs> in the PayPal and Venmo for the J.D. Simo home for J.D. Simo. I've got kids who need cigarettes, okay? And, uh, no, I really appreciate, in all, in all honesty, I really appreciate your kindness and your generosity, folks. It really makes a big difference. And, uh, obviously, uh, we're here playing a, playing a, a show for you all, so throw some in there for us, okay? I really appreciate it. Um, so... Um, I got a few things to discuss. We're obviously going to focus on improvisation and jamming here tonight um, in the funky basement. But I've got some pretty big news. A week from tonight, week from tonight, my new record, J.D. Simo, I, I, you ask me later how I came up with the title for it, um, comes out a week from tonight. And um, I've got some uh, awesome news. A lot of you have been... Uh, DMing and commenting, asking about pre-orders and bundles. And just for tonight's show, we got everything launched and ready to go. Um, and there's some awesome bundles and new merch that you can get. And we have a great relationship with Bandcamp. You've heard a lot of people talk about Bandcamp through the pandemic. They're an incredibly awesome platform for independent musicians and musicians on labels and so on and so forth. And uh, our label, Crow's Feet, has worked hand in hand with Bandcamp, and Bandcamp could not be cooler. So if you want to get some pre-order awesome stuff, go to my Bandcamp site, JD Simo. Got the link up there. You can get pre-order vinyl, pre-order CDs, and the new t-shirt design. Wow! And, as my good friend Tom Bukovac likes to say, they're not those scratchy gildans. They're, they're the good quality stuff. We've upgraded to good quality stuff, folks, because you know what? You matter. And you never didn't. But, you know, I just really wanted to have good shirts for the first time in my life. So, so yes. Yeah, so, go, hop on the Bandcamp site. There's a bunch of bundles. You can obviously get stuff individual. Um, but... If you put in your order, uh, you'll be the first ones to get them. 
uh, because they're shipping from a different place. And I'll sign them for you, which actually knocks the value down. Um, <laughs> well, it comes but, in ink, uh, you know. Well, yeah, you know. But nonetheless, if you're happy to do that. So go to the Bandcamp site, do that, and uh, and check it out. And uh, next week we're going to have a special, uh, special episode of Greasy Time featuring um, the new record and talking about talking about all things that so be looking for that so moving on from there we're going to have a joint records of the week um and uh we've got some very eclectic picks which is how i like it that's how I, you know me on this show i tend to kind of veer towards the r&b and the uh the funk and uh definitely blues and stuff like that but Eclectic is the name of the game, and so um, I've got some records, Adam's got some records, Zimmerman's got some records. So uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is uh, two new records. This right here is the new, the, uh, the new L. Michaels Affair single that just came out a couple of days ago on Big Crown out of uh, Brooklyn. And uh, this, is, this is a, uh, a single called Shana Na. Leon Michaels um, is well known on the show, um, his work mostly with Daptone and with Charles Bradley and the Manhattan Street Band, and um, this is just great. Um, any, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of anything that that they do, and this also involves Homer Steinweiss and Nick Mulshon and uh, a lot of guys that make up the Manhattan Street Band for Daptone. So uh, check that out. As usual, all these are available on Spotify. And then... Um, it's probably not a surprise um, for all the folks out there knowing what I like that uh, Krongbin's new record, Mordecai, which came out two weeks ago, is actually my favorite record they've done up to this point. Uh, I feel like it's a really great amalgam of all their influences, and I like the addition of the vocals personally. I don't know about you guys, but I, I really dig it, and I'm a big fan of the entire band. Mark Spear is... A very very gifted sonic, you know, sculptor. He's a beautiful. His melodies are really beautiful. You know, it's. Uh, I'm a big fan of his in particular. And who and who doesn't love Laura Lee, right? And um, moving on from there. So those are two two new records. Um, I've been listening to James Brown's "Ain't It Funky" record a lot this past week. Um, the biggest thing about this record, folks, is. A lot of them are, a lot of the tracks on this record are the original tracks without James's lead vocal and with this weird ass funky lead guitar on it, which I did some digging and it turns out it's a guy named Alfonso Keller. Now that's something I didn't know uh, going into this week and I just love his playing. It's real jagged and really just disgusting. I'm making dirty faces as I say this because it's just so oh god, it's just so funky it hurts so good, you know? So so and what anyway. What's first name? Alfonso. Alfonso. That's the coolest first name. That's the coolest name. A absolutely. That's that'll be my porn name when all this doesn't work. Um not that anyone would ever want to see yeah. that. Oh my god. That's terrible. That's awful. Ugh. I disgust myself. <laughs> Anyway, moving on from there. Um, moving on from there, this next record has been a, a, a huge record for me since I was a teenager. This is Magic Sam live at Silvio's with uh, the great Shaky Jake uh, playing harmonica. And um, this record in particular, it was recorded in 1968, not long before Sam passed away, unfortunately. And this was just a standard run-of-the-mill weekly gig at Silvio. Silvio's was one of the famous clubs in Chicago. Other clubs including Teresa's, which was mostly Buddy Guy and Junior Wells' home place. There was Pepper's Lounge, which was which was Muddy Waters and Holland Wolf's main place. Um, the 401 Club. Later, later there was the Checkerboard, you know. But Silvio's was, uh, was certainly one of the places, and that was a place that Sam had a residency at. And this is just... It's actually probably my favorite recording of him because it's it's him in its in its rawest state and it's just him and a trio with a harmonica player, um, the great Odie Payne playing drums. Which actually, Adam, I want to turn you on to some because 
Odie was um, Odie is one of like three great Chicago blues drummers, and Odie was obsessed with like calypso music. Oh, cool! And so within the span of, I'll play you some stuff after the broadcast yeah, because, like, within the the concept of like straight up hardcore Chicago blues, he has like a cowbell that he would be really flippant and do really cool stuff with. Uh-huh. You know, like yeah. that no one would ever do, and it's so hip. But Odie Payne, so Odie Payne's dude, I'm not familiar. I'd love it. That's yeah. one of the that's one of the reasons I love this record so much, and I love Magic Sam, obviously. And look how cool he looks. I think uh, Magic Sam probably, uh, I think he probably smoked something before that photo was taken. And um, the next record is uh, should also be no surprise. I'm in a big hill country North Mississippi phase right now. This is. Junior Kimbrough's uh, Do the Romp record. This record is weird in his um, in his discography because just like the first one that I talked about on the show, um, which was cut in the 60s and then released 40 years later, uh, Do the Romp was actually recorded in 88 and it was actually released after he passed away. Um, I think this was released in 98 or 99. And this is a real, um, like... The rhythm section is really, uh, like, it's real dry and in-your-face and sort of 70s-type production. And then you've got Junior doing his 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 very kind of trance-like, beautiful, you know, African-inspired, you know, thing that he did over this, like, funky, dry, in-your-face production rhythm section. It's a really great record. And so I was listening to that a bunch this week. And um, the last record... Um, uh, of my records of the week is uh, Jimmy McGriff, Groove, Groove Grease. Great record. Uh, I feel like uh, I'm not myself if I don't listen to at least one organ trio record obsessively every week. Um, so now, moving on from there, um, moving on from there, Adam. Yes, sir. Uh, Adam, I'll pull you up on screen. You're on right now, buddy. Lovely. How are you doing? I'm well. Good to see everybody. Well, good to see the lens. Good to see the lens. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell us about, uh, tell us about some of your records. Where are we starting, Mo? We start Wherever no you jive. like. Let's just start with No Jive. Okay. Buddy Rich, No Jive. I, uh, I stumbled onto this record as a teenager. Um, you know, like my first job I had, every paycheck I would get every two weeks, I'd just would buy CDs randomly, you know. So Understood. Getting into, and so this was How just, we buy records. Had, I had no idea. I just took a, took a chance and, uh. It's incredible, man. It's it's a big band, you know, but I think it's later. I think it's, a, I don't it is, know yeah. the exact year, but I think it's the 70s, but it's like big band stuff. Um, he, of course, is doing his usual blazing uh, thing, but the uh, the uh, the horn arrangements, man, really grab me. They're just, they're really cool and huge, you know, and uh, it's a fantastic big band record. It's great. And he's one of your biggest... Like Buddy's early, definitely early, a hero. early Buddy is one of my earliest heroes. Yeah. In fact, my seventh grade band director was like, "You should listen to Neil Peart and Buddy Rich." So that kind of <laughs> just that started the whole. I, maybe yeah, yeah. That started the jazz and the prog and the whole thing. Anyway, um, so I've been hip to this record for a long time, but it remains in regular rotation, uh, you know. And I just happened to pull it out this week and give it a listen. It's great. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. What else you got? Uh, we got uh, fella Kute. He missed yes. Rose. Oh shoot! I got rid of the. Yes, did you? I got rid of the graphic. Hold on one second. Well, I got you, it. You can pull it. I up. got um, it. I'm pulling it up. All right, all right. All right. Talk about it for a second. Well, this is just for the last couple months, really. You know, since the pandemic's been going on, I'll just like either put on Spotify or YouTube just and let it play while I'm like cooking or cleaning or just in the background. And this popped up, and the second track from it. I don't even know the name of it. It grabbed me, like the rhythmic thing that's happening. It's almost like the whole thing's like a 12-8 or triplet feel, but then the percussionist is playing kind of straight against it. I don't even know. Part of the reason I like it so much is because I don't even know what's going on. It's awesome. Like, it's really cool the way they're making it feel. <laughs> and so I, like, ran from the kitchen in, uh, you know. Did you see, really? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I got to know what this is. So how that's, cute is that that's how it happened dude i didn't even this record is new to me it's like three months old you know and it just that's the exact story i i was it came so, out three months I was ago so huh? captive no I i'm just, just kidding i'm just kidding uh, yeah i kid so, i kid it was so captivating i had to i had to go scope it i kid it's for, <laughs> it's for me <laughs> to poop on 
Um. Ah, Chick Corea. Ah, yes. Return to Forever. Indeed. But Indeed. Not, but not, not, not. And Return to Forever. The Explain. Chick Corea album titled Return to Forever, which is with uh, when Flora was singing and Ayerto is playing drum kit on this record. And I believe the next one, which is Light as a Feather, which is the one that has Spain on it, um, that, you know, most, of course, that's his, one of his big hits for the day. I like this one a lot. This has La Fiesta on, on the B-side, which I think is such a killer, killer, like, Afro, uh, you know, six kind of feel. It's, it's really cool. And I actually heard a version of that. What hit me to that was I heard a, a version of that song done by Main, Maynard Ferguson's big band, um, and then discovered years after that that it was a chick tune. And so, anyway, this record, it, my roommate has this on vinyl, and he just spun it a couple weeks ago. We were having our morning coffee, and he put this on. I was like, no shit, man. All right. So <laughs> I've been listening to it a couple times a week for the last three weeks or so. That's really good. Um, yeah, yeah, that one, this one's good. And it's funny, man, I usually kind of turn my nose up at vocals and jazz, but there's something I really like about Flora in this lineup, you know, it's, it's really cool. It's great. Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah. And then your last and one. And then Budo's Band 3, man. The Snake. Ah, uh, The Snake, yes. I, I, again, this is just one of those things that, like, I put it on, you know, at home while I'm going about my thing, and it's just, every groove is awesome. It's just constantly cool and constantly good and constantly feels good. Like, the whole time the record's on, you're just kind of like, yeah, all right. I feel uh, good. I feel good. And uh, as I said on one of the recent Greasy Times, like these guys are like probably my favorite newer band, you know, of the last 20 years. I think they're spectacular. So Without uh, a doubt. I so, yeah, that one, that one was in rotation this week also. I couldn't agree more. Well, Adam, thank you so much. Quite welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to throw it over right now to my dear friend Michael Zimmerman, who has, like, one of the best tastes in music of anybody I know. And... Here he is right I mean, now. He's right, dude. You got really good you taste. You got good yeah, taste, you man. Really you got good taste. taste. He's a fellow fellow record geek. Uh, yeah, I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spent too much money on records, you know. Uh, That's what we do. Well, uh, the first record I wanted to talk about, I've been driving around in my car listening to it pretty much nonstop, which is... Uh, Fear of a Black Planet by Public Enemy. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> came out, yes! Came out in 1990. Uh, the big hit was obviously Fight the Power, which was in Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee. Mm -hmm. Great film. Uh, it's the, you know, Radio Raheem's walking around with the boombox, blasting Fight the Power the whole movie, you know? Indeed. But uh, to me, it's kind of, you know, there's our really intense kind of heavy times, and it's the only thing to me that really... Uh, has been able to capture the energy of the moment we're living in right now. Uh, Chucky's got that kind of fire and brimstone, you know. Yes, the yes, rhythm, the rhythm, you know, like it's like that <laughs> deep voice, and it's just like so militant and so high energy, and so yeah. like, I mean, that record just doesn't let you go. Like, no, it, it starts doesn't. off at ten, and like halfway through the record, you're like, can I get a break? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's like, every song is just like. <laughs> so hard, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah. So, I, 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 in the words of our dear friend Patrick Sweeney, masterful, yeah, masterful, masterful it's, choice. It's, it's yeah. Like the the bomb shelter, the production team. Oh uh, hell yeah, yeah, the absolutely. They, the way they put beats together, it's so loud and heavy, and it's just like, whew, man. It's absolutely. Been really been really been getting me lately. And then, it's a uh, groovy. And then you've got some other eclectic choices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go for it, buddy. Uh, well, there's a record that came out in 2017, I think. Yes. Uh, by SZA. Uh, Control. Control, yep. Stylized C-T-R-L. Indeed. Like, like Indeed. on a computer, you know, keyboard or whatever. Go, Go Gina is my favorite track. I got really into that record, like, maybe two summers ago. It's just, yeah. like, all I listen to nonstop in my car. And uh, then I pulled it out randomly, like, a couple days ago, driving around trying to find something to listen to, and I forgot how great it is. I mean, you know, as we were as we were discussing, it's yeah. like the, in you know there there is there's 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 um, I feel at this particular moment in time um, there's there's probably more incredible music being made like as a whole at least that I'm aware of 
that you know more so than any other point in my life. Um, but when that kind of translates into mainstream success, it's still elusive. Oh. And it's like with the exception of, you know, obviously the Alabama Shakes would be Edward the Mars. Yeah, exactly. You know, the Roots. You know, like there's 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 a handful of of artists. You know, like going back 15 years. You know, like like Nora Jones and stuff. Like every once in a while, something yeah. really artistic like finds a mass audience. And yeah. it's, and I, I mean, I. I really think that, you know, coming, as you know, you know, someone who loves all the old R&B and soul records, yeah. Curtis Mayfield and Marvin Gaye and all that, yeah. I think I think that record is is, is a modern-day R&B classic. I would agree. Say. I would the agree. production on it's incredible. The uh, the lyrics are, like, shockingly vulnerable and honest. Very, you yeah. Know? It's like, whoa. Which is funny <laughs> because, like, when you, when you see her, it, it's funny because I remember, like, watching the Apple Music um interview with her when the record first came out and she's not the best interviewee yeah like she kind of she doesn't speak that eloquently she isn't that insightful but then you listen to these songs and it's like what yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's totally. kind of it's kind of like a perfect example of where the art of the situation you know like it's is 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 her release you know like because because it's not as evident when you're watching an interview of her, you know. So, great record. Yeah, phenomenal. And then, my, easily my favorite pick of yours, my favorite pick of yours. Go for it, buddy. Well, I love this. Uh, it's a it's a record from 1973 by Todd Rundgren called "A Wizard, A True Star." Yes. Nice, and, dude. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the weirdest records I've ever heard in my life. You know. This is. I love that you picked this and. My man, one of my managers, Michael Kaplan. Actually, both of my managers, Harvey Leeds and Michael Kaplan, will both love this pick because nice. this is like, this is right in both their wheelhouse. Because this yeah. is like, like Harvey is like all things psychedelic, and like Kaplan is like a huge prog fan. And like to me, this record yeah, is like yeah. an artful, like Beatlesque yeah. prog, like right as prog is starting to become a thing. And he's yeah. like, he does that, that like medley of old soul songs but yep. them all weird and psychedelic and it's like like I, I started listening to that and it's you hear the influence of that record in a lot of like Tame Impala Absolutely King Gizzard Pond like the kind of modern day psychedelic bands I, when I started listening to that record it was like oh you know these guys were probably really you know one of those things totally you know, totally dots get connected in your brain when you find you know an old record something like that you know? yeah which is the fun part of and it he, he, he played all the instruments himself on it engineered it himself i mean it's just genius level stuff it it's is great. made it all in his yeah. apartment yeah wow dude did you ever listen speaking of todd run did you ever listen to the uh, utopia stuff yeah some, some, dude i love some that the some, blue record with the bubbles and the eye in the little, pyramid it's like it's a little cheese ball for i me, but, love <laughs> but yeah, that shit there's dude. some cool stuff in there you yeah. kind of you kind of forget how much of like a guitar shredder, Todd Rundgren could be. Yeah, dude. He, dude, he that, totally was. Dude, the so, sounds on that. There's so many weird tones, though. Yeah, the, like the, uh, whatever they're trying yeah. to synthesize that they're uh, using are. Really well, those are the awesome. those are the original ones that like. The, the dude, original. it's that Utopia shit is. He's fucking so good cool, at playing man. everything else. I like kind of like Prince too. He's like he's just so good at playing everything else that you forget how good of a guitar player he is. Right. 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 Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. So that, like in Utopia, where he's just the guitar player. Yep. And he's just he's just ripping. Yeah, yeah. dude, I, I love the band too. Yeah. And, and the Utopia stuff. Man, what a what a great collection of records, folks. Go find you some of that. There's a really good cross section of of all different types of music, which is what it's about, folks. Got to keep it fresh. Indeed. You got to keep it fresh, man. You got to keep it fresh. You got to throw that shit in the dryer and the washer. Well, the, the washer first. <laughs> Don't throw it in the dryer. Well, you just you want to set that stain in real good. <laughs> put it in the dryer first. <laughs> Then wash it and hang it outside. Oh, man, I ruined Air drying is nice, man. Air drying is really nice. If indeed, my favorite thing, I, I remember like uh, when I was, like my glasses are like clogging up like crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. The man. mass glass combo, man. It is the mass glass combo. Every time I go combo. to the grocery store, I got to like, it, it's, a, it's a question of like, well, do I want the shades on to avoid somebody potentially spitting in my eye or... And know that they're going to fog up, or uh, do I just put them on top of my head? Uh, like like, I, you know, like uh, 28 Days Later? The modern, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> precisely, precisely, dude. 
But no, it reminds me of your <laughs> reference. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Bill Murray and uh, <laughs> what I was going to say about the, the air drying thing is Bill Murray and Ghostbusters 2, which is horribly underrated, by the way. Ghostbusters 2 is actually Vigo. a really great movie. Vigo the Carpathian. Vigo the Carpathian. <laughs> I like the buzzing of flies to him. <laughs> <laughs> he is Vigo! I love that guy. What's that guy's name? I forget that guy's name. I don't know. But I love his... Oh, my God. Why am I all covered with goo? <laughs> I love that guy. Anyway, uh, Ghostbusters 2, baby. But now, I, I, what I'm about to say is, like, the moment has so passed. What, I'm just going to drag it out longer because <laughs> it just makes it more painful. But, like, you know... There's that scene where Sigourney Reaver goes to stay with Bill Murray and she cleans up his apartment without him there and he comes back and he's like, what happened? Like, what? Dana, were there clothes in the sort of floor bed area? And she goes, yeah, put, it, put them in the hamper. And he goes, I have a hamper? And she goes, yeah, I thought they were dirty. And he goes, well, you see, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole level system to the whole clean slash dirty. And so he like pulls a shirt out of there and he goes, see, for example, for example, hang this outside the window for five, ten minutes, good as new. See, it's see, like it was tour. totally not worth it's it. It's like being on tour. No, no, that's good. <laughs> totally not worth it's it. Like being on tour. <laughs> just like being on tour. Just like being on tour. Yeah. It's, except we're, we have lights and... This is what... This and, is clean and clean underwear. <laughs> and we're all going to sleep in our own bed tonight. Yeah, yeah. And we don't Otherwise, have it's just like it. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like it, except not. Oh, and we didn't drive 450 miles today either. Indeed. That was nice. Though. Indeed. People think it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> it is. And it well, is. Ghostbusters 2 references. It's all <laughs> driving and laundry. Yeah. Driving, driving and laundry. Driving, laundry, and, and, and Cracker beer. Barrel. Yeah, and every once in a while, you get to play some music. Yes, yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, you're, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let's play something else for the folks, and uh, then we'll come back and talk about some other stuff, and then we'll play some more, folks. So y'all having fun? Y'all having a good time? Everybody hanging in there? Everybody? Hey!
damn son of a bitch. What? We call that nothing. Nothing. <laughs> call it what you want. No song. <laughs> call it what you want. So the concept of tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is no songs. No songs. So, uh, it's actually how Adam and I met, and it's how we met Zimmerman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I will say this, pontificating time for the Grease of Time audience out there. <laughs> um, if you practice diligently in your off time, uh, there's nothing greater than when you get um, when you get into an environment with other good musicians and you allow it to channel in a non-preconceived way. And um, I feel like the very essence of improvisation itself can become very uh, uh, kind of almost condescending in a way. Uh, meaning that I feel that it is something that when it truly is good, there's really no way to kind of encapsulate what's really happening, okay? And so there's lots of ways people describe it. There's lots of ways people, like, um, you know, sort of try and describe the process. I think the more you try and figure it out the farther you push it away from yourself you know time and time again i find that it's when i just shut the fuck up and just let it happen those are when it really works and i agree man and uh when you're um when you try and figure it out put it in a box analyze it um describe it um all those things um it just kind of dilutes the water. Um, it just is what it is, you know? And uh, I think that, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Having a moment here, Adam. No, 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 I know. But <laughs> Having a moment, like, I'm talking to the no, people. No, it's beautiful, but it's just like, I, I, you know, in the media recently. Oh, sorry. Like, that's yeah, not yeah. at all what I meant. No, I know. I just That's why I chuckled, though. So. But, um, no, it's just uh, my love of, uh, of improvisation. And that goes for a myriad of genres. And I think all three of us, and certainly all of my friends, all of our friends, um, have the same love. Like, that's one of the things that sort of binds... You know, what's great about jazz, what's great about rock and roll, what's great about blues, you know, all these great American art forms um, are in one way or another either overtly or somewhat shaded from, you know, improvisation and being in the moment, being at the heart of it. Because, you know, even if you listen, like, say, an Elvis Presley record or something that's very basic, um, you know, what makes it great is that something was happening that was, like, not pre-thought. Like, they were playing and doing the best they can with what they had. You know, it's that or something as rustic as John Lee Hooker, um, who, again, is dealing with not a lot of technical ability, is saying the same thing that Yusuf Latif is saying to me, or Bob Dylan through his writing or Neil Young through his writing, or Joni Mitchell through her writing, or, um, or uh, Art Tatum through his piano, or, you know, it just, you know, that's the, the great thing that sort of binds it all together. It's fucking soul, folks. You know? So, you have to ask, no, we'll never know. It, exactly. <laughs> that's it. That's it. If you gotta put it in a box, then get the fuck out of here. No. So, anyway. Um, we love doing this. I enjoy doing this. And I hope you're all hanging in. Um, just want to talk uh, before we play our last thing here. Um, want to talk about some uh, equipment stuff, really quick. I know we're sort of sort of off from our normal things, boys. I'll see you, but see you yep, in a minute. All right. um, my rig of the week, folks, is these things right here. String joy. 
I have used lots of different strings over the years, and uh, here I'll put a better picture of them up for you. I recently uh, did a podcast uh, called The Tone Mob with a dear friend of mine, Blake, and um, he hit me to these strings. They're made right here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's an independent uh, small business, and uh, a couple of my, well, one of my really good friends, Joey Landreth, the great Joey Landreth, he also uses these. And uh, Ariel Posen also uses these as well. Um, the thing that I really dig about the string joys is their pure nickel round core, which is like strings used to be made, okay? Uh, back, you know, in the 60s and the 50s. They don't have this kind of gacky kick, 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 kick type of uh, frequency in them. And I just love them. They feel great and they sound great. And so I wanted to definitely take a moment and give a shout out. Uh, that's what I'm digging. And those are my gauges right there. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, as is obvious, I'm really digging on red with the, with her nylon saddles back in there and the Bigsby back on it. I love it. And, uh, I posted a picture of my humble yet toneful command station down here on, uh, Instagram. A lot of people had a lot of questions and a lot of funny comments and DMs and stuff. And, uh, the most common question I got was yes i happen to be lucky enough to have an old original fuzz face down here that i use uh along with this uh jack's fuzz blob uh but what about something modern like a modern fuzz that's good um there's there's a couple there's one is uh the germanium fuzz that uh my buddy gabriel at echo park guitars up in detroit makes that thing's fantastic. I actually have one here. I use it on bass a lot, and uh, I also use it on guitar some too, but I love that thing, and I love you, Gabriel. Um, and uh, also, um, two other friends of mine, um, Analog Man, obviously his his good old sun face, I've got a good one over here, um, uh, is, is, is as good as they come. And then also my dear friend, uh, Weaver Effects, uh, makes uh, a thing uh, makes makes both a germanium and a silicon fuzz, um, and it's the uh, the face of spades, I think, is what he calls it. And uh, I have one great in there, and it's yeah, it's really great. great. Name. It's a it's a it's great, great pedal. So check those out if you're so inclined. And now I'm going to throw it over to my brothers for a little bit of your for the gear nerds out there. Uh, Adam, yeah. I'll throw it to you. All what right. do you got to talk about? Well, I brought a different ride similar tonight. So Did you? Yes. I mean, every if anybody watched the Greasy Time I was on, they know this is a 76 Ludwig kit. 12, 16, 22. Uh, but yeah, this is a 24-inch Istanbul uh, 50th anniversary ride. Um, or is it 100th? I don't even remember which is it. The anniversary one. Um, I it's got it several 12th, years ago. 12th and a half. 12th and a half. It's... Really mellow sounding and really cool, and I brought it for tonight just because I wanted something a little less clangy than the, the usual one, you know. You wanted something less clangy. Yeah, 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 just a different tone. Something less clangy, more A little more darker, mangy. you know, it's a smooth. I like it, yeah. It's nice and round and warm and lovely. Round and warm? Mm-hmm. Not, cool. Not clangy. Okay. Nice. How would, so you, the, how would you compare it to a trash can lid? A trash can lid? Uh, a lot more expensive. And, <laughs> and that's it. No, and a little kidding. rounder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's a killer ride. Civil it is. That's actually, that's actually it, It's actually probably favorites. worth more money than the drums are, uh, to be honest. But he's true. He's pretty close. Pretty close. He's telling the truth, It's folks. pretty close. That ride cymbal and these drums are about the same amount of money. Anyway. <sighs> and Mr. Zimmerman. Yes. What you got for us, buddy? We, it, I feel so bad. In the last song, your camera fell down. I replaced it, got it back up. Now your light not, is not working. Just I'm, wah, technical wah. difficulties. I'm, do, I'm doing the best I can. Hey, I'm sorry. I get it. What you got for us, folks? Uh, well, <clears throat> I've got this uh, trusty old jazz bass, 2005. Maybe. So it's vintage. <laughs> I, I bought this from a small guitar shop in my hometown when I was uh, 14, maybe. 
I was in ninth grade, um, and people, some people come up to me thinking it's a road worn series fender, but um, mm -hmm. it's actually just uh, it's been the only bass I've ever had, and I'm not very careful with it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it's just that I'm clumsy, really, more than anything. But it does have the cool like belt buckle wear on the back, which is cool. You know, it's got some character. And, Man, I've been all over the country with this thing, and it's my baby, you know? It's my, it's my it's special. It's your girl. It's my, yeah. it's my special. You know it. My special little guy, you know? My special little guy. My special and, little uh, guy. You know, it's got its, it's, it's, got its weird uh, little quirks. Like, if I have one pickup all the way on and one all the way off, there's a weird buzz, so you got to have them both all the way on. <laughs> and then, you know, That's <laughs> sometimes you could, like, there's, like, little sweet spots you can get away without, without the buzz. You know, but you have to kind of, like, I know where they are because yeah, I've been playing yeah. it for 15 years. Understood. And this thing, you kind of got to jiggle a little bit, you know, whatever. You know, it's got it's got its little uh, its little quirks that you kind of get used to. It's like it's like a person, you know. It's you got get, its thing. Yeah. You, you know, you get you get used to someone's someone's quirks, and, you know. I love you, this thing, man. Fuck. You, you can. You can. <laughs> you can adapt. <laughs> and then uh, I've got a pretty, really simple pedal board. Um... I got this thing last year. It's an Origin Effects Cali 76 compressor. Thing's pretty pretty rad. Uh, Origin Effects, folks. Origin Effects. I Smile at the camera and say Origin Effects. Origin Effects. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, I... Uh, yes, and it's the choice of the new generation. <laughs> yeah. New print. Uh, yellow. I was looking for a compressor pedal. I went to uh, Eastside Music Supply. Shout out yes! To Eastside! One of the best guitar stores in the, in the country, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh... Did a shout out, or a, sorry, a shootout with a couple different um, compressor pedals. Well, you shouted while you were shooting them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and this was just the one by a long shot. It beat the shit out of any comp every compressor pedal I tried. And it's a, you know, it's a. I love, I love it. It's a great pedal. Hey, back on. Yeah, look at that. Hey. And then I just got a that couple of classic, nice. classic Junker uh, Boss DD3 Digi Delay. Yes. Boss OC3 Super Octave. Can't yes. go wrong with a good, good, good boss stomp box. Can't go wrong. Yeah, you can't go wrong. They're again, as Patrick Sane would say, they are the industry standard. That's right. They're, yeah, I mean, <laughs> a lot of good. Yeah, yeah. Boss makes great pedals, man. Indeed, indeed. Well, I'll bring us back to all three of us. We can all be a nice, happy family again. There we go. Hey, hey guys. Well, I'm having a freaking blast. I really appreciate you guys. Folks, are you hanging in there? Is this enough? Is this too crazy? Ah, oh, the light went off. What is going on? Eh, whatever. It's just, it's, it liked you talking about origin effects, is what happened. Eh, that's fine. Yeah. So, folks, um, again, thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to space out and give you one more good jam. Um, the whole point of this is I want to always kind of bring you different facets of things that I think are, are really fun and enjoyable and things that I like. And so, um, you know, whether it's hardcore blues or whether it's funk or whether it's jazz or whether it's roots music or, or whether it's like kind of freak out music, you know, the essence of kind of what it is that we're kind of doing here uh, for me, and I'm sure you guys probably uh, can weigh in on this, um, you know, when it comes down to it, I have a lot of loves, but um, when it comes to music, um, and, uh, you know, I love old school R&B and funk and, and rock and roll, and I, I love real blues, and then there's this beautiful thing that happened in the 60s and into the 70s where like psychedelic influence like it it hit jazz it hit rock music obviously it hit blues and there's this beautiful swirl that happened and to me you know obviously records like bitches brew and on the corner and live evil by miles davis and records like electric mud by Muddy Waters, Funkadelic's first record, and their first yeah, four records. You know, obviously Maggot Brain is, is an important one. You've heard me talk about it way too much. Um, Isaac Hayes, Hot Buttered Soul, um, East West, The Grateful Dead, The Allman Brothers, you know, on and on and on. You know, like, it kind of permeated all these different things, and it's just something that 
is a big part of what it is that I love, you know, and it's really fun. And I assume if you've hung in there with us this long, you'll hang in with us for some more. So let's have some more fun. And again, we didn't plan any of this. We haven't discussed anything. We are, you know, because I know I'll get some questions about that. Of like, oh, did you guys, re you know, plan that or rehearse that or is that something you wrote? No, everything tonight has been complete improvisation. Complete. We aren't even discussing what key we're going to play something in. So. We just got to find it eventually. Ladies and gentlemen, ready, guys? Break. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so from from bar twelve then. Bar bar. Uh, bar. This is going to be an M minor. You jump in on the. Uh, after the head. This is going to be an M minor. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes! My light Woo. went out. His light went out. Adam's the only one not It'll in the It'll be dark. anarchy. It's anarchy. Well, this one's in the house, so. It is. It's part of the house. Guys. You would actually be more scared if that went off. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Guys, I can't thank you enough for joining me. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together out there in virtual, <laughs> virtual land for the inimitable <laughs> Michael Zimmerman and my musical soulmate, <laughs> Adam Appersoft. And God bless you, gentlemen. Thanks, man. Joy to play with you. Oh. A joy. All right, I'm going to come back to my home screen. Folks, thank you so much. This has been a banner one for me. This is our first full band, Greasy Time live stream. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, one more time, remember, the album comes out a week from tonight. Follow me on Spotify, JD Simo, just type my name in there. The two singles, Love and One of Those Days, are out now. And if you would like to order a pre-order bundle of my new record, go to Bandcamp now. Go to Bandcamp because they rock. And they're good people, and they're good. They're they're good to independent artists. They're good to us. Please, please go to my Bandcamp, JD Simo. Get you a vinyl. Get you a new T-shirt. Get you a CD. Get them all, baby. And please, if you wouldn't mind, I'm asking you to do a lot of stuff. And I'm I'm sorry. I'm being pretty shameless tonight. Please, if you like what we've done here tonight, throw some money in the PayPal and Venmo there at the bottom of your screen. Because, like I said, my daughter needs cigarettes. She's two years old and got to get her going early. That's really not true, folks. I'm actually... She started at six months. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I actually don't have a kid. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, no, really, folks. It really means a lot. And, uh, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you for always joining me here on the Greasy Time live stream. And, uh... Just be safe, be joyful, and as always, keep it greasy. All right? J.D. Simo, out.